Hello Libra, welcome to your reading with me, Cindy. In case you're wondering where I am, I am at home. I'm just in my little dining room area here, so I decided to set up here. Um, if you've seen me for a little while, you know that I tend to get, I start to feel like the energy is just overly contained if I'm in the same spot over and over and over again. So I do tend to move around a little bit and it's probably fun for you, <laughs> get a little bit different scenery. So Libra, let me see, let me look deeply into you if I can. <clears throat> I am going to look as deeply into you as I possibly can. I'm going to try to see things that not everybody is seeing. Because specifically, I'm going to try to see who you really are, like right now, who you really are right now. But then we're also going to see, you know, what most people are perceiving you to be. You know, it's kind of on the surface. Um, it's not the depths. I'm going to see why you hide your true self, if there's an element of yourself that you're hiding, how this affects your relationships, advice for you, outcome if you should follow the advice. I'm going to use the, because you, you're hiding in the shadow, you're like, ooh, hesitate, ponder, delay, confidence, changes, hope. I feel a lot in the underline. This could be an interesting reading. I'm going to use the L key deck and then my tarot of positive clarity and my teeny tiny everyday witch deck. So let's get started. Let us get started. You know, it's funny that underline, it almost reminds me of um, coming up with new ways to say the same thing is what I'm getting that underline that you had there, like coming up with new ways and not being sure about how to do it. So I, it almost even feels like too, like if you could be dealing with a partner, a friend, a sibling, a, your own kid, something where, you know, you're trying to kind of convey some sort of message and it's not getting through and you're thinking, is there a different way I could say this? That's what that underline felt like to me. So whoever needed to see that, hear it, there you are. All right, let's see, Libra, Libra, the skills of cosmic justice, the skills, of cosmic justice for Libra. It's really funny. So I have here, it's a little cloth for cleaning my glasses, but I always use it to clean the uh, camera on uh, the lens before I do a video. Um, and I'm seeing optimal clarity, whatever comes your way. I don't know why, like I'm just drawn to that. Optimal clarity, whatever comes your way. So it kind of feels like anything coming towards you right now, like if you perceive it a certain way, that is exactly how it is. Like it's, you are going through a, a stage or a cycle where you will kind of have very, a lot of clarity in terms of your observational skills. And so who you really are. She who guides, new path, guide, and renewal. You're go who you really are is you're on a new path here. You're going in a new direction. You're taking a new approach. Well, that's interesting too, because the underlying of the pre-shuffle, it felt like, you know, a new approach in terms of trying to convey something. So it might even just be a new approach for you. Um, you could be trying to guide someone though too. I'm really getting that feeling for some reason. And the optimal clarity as well, like you might become very, very clear suddenly about how to do this. Like if there's someone around you that you're trying to mentor, to guide, to uh, support, to help in some way, and they're like, they're not getting it. I don't know. I feel like you're, you're this, you are the new path, and you will provide some, you will find a way to be, become very clear. See that the mask you're hiding behind she who listens understanding witness and compassion yeah what is going on with you here you're definitely but you see this is how others perceive you so maybe you're not even saying something like maybe people are coming to you with their problems or with some difficulties or you're just witnessing a friend or a relative or mm, somebody's going through a difficult time or a confusing time or their path is maybe unclear or foggy. And to them, you know, like to them, or to the rest of the world, you are just very compassionate. You 
You take the time to listen, to hear what they have to say. Because this person is listening, they're not saying anything. But then, right, it's almost like I, I got the feeling like you're trying to come up with the right way to say something to someone. So I don't know if somebody has been down this road before and you're witnessing that again, like someone in your circle is kind of like doing the same thing again and you've tried to guide them or give them advice in the past and you know, it's not getting it. Um, <laughs> they're not getting it. So it's almost like you've stopped conveying that information. So now you just feel like, you know what? There's someone I can talk to. Is that how that feels? That's how people perceive you right now, Libra. You're someone I can talk to. You hear me. You witness me. You're kind of compassionate. But you're not giving out answers. But it maybe I want to say too, because you want to you don't want to say anything. You don't want to help anyone out here unless it can be very, very clear. Because you really are the path to renewal. Well, that's interesting too. You might be the answer to somebody's problem, but you're not presenting us the answer quite yet. Why you hide your true self? She who resists, fearless, justified, and resistant. Why you hide your true self? Are you resistant? I really don't get that though. Are you hot? So th this is, I think, one of the first times a card has come out like this for me in this area of a reading. Um, why you hide your true self? I feel like it's because someone else is resistant to information. Right? But yet you kind of like, you're open just to listen. You, there's, for some reason, you have a lot of compassion in a scenario for someone. You just might have a very strong soul tie with somebody here, whether that's like a, a close family member or a friend. Um, and it is almost like, but there's something here. Is this compassion just because of that? Or is it because maybe this is something similar that you've been through? You know, like when you say, yeah, I know what it's like. I've been there. I've done that. But maybe that's not exactly what this person needs to hear right now either, right? Because you think about when you were and whatever the situation could be. In that scenario, the last thing you really wanted to hear from anybody was, you know, been there, done that. It'll all be better tomorrow. Don't worry about it. Instead, you're just like witnessing this. You're being there. You're allowing them to process it and go through it. But you're, I honestly, it's so weird. It's like you're the new path. So you're the renewal. You could be something new for someone in your life. Oh, that's funny. I'm kind of getting like a scenario too of, you know, even just like recently meeting somebody and it's just you're meeting them at a difficult time and you can kind of see like through that and you're thinking, oh, I think there's something really interesting about this person, but this timing isn't good for them. And right, because you're hiding your true self because fearless, justified, resistant. This person does with that energy feels like they could be going through something. I don't think you are that person. I could be wrong. But I think you're hiding yourself because of this an ener This energy is outside of you. So how does this affect your relationships? She who instigates. Leadership, provocation, and power. Now, if it wasn't for the fact that these two ladies look so similar, they look like the same person, just in different outfits and lighting, it helps me right away... Uh, zone in on okay who is this in your relationships that is supposed to be the leader that is supposed to um instigate that's you but it's like you're holding off doing that interesting advice for you this is very curious reading she who brings light light serenity and beacon all right Yeah, because this too, this is in darkness. And it's almost like these two cards, they sit below each other in the spread. And this is you, like this is totally you. I, I asked who you really are. You were this new path, you were renewal. 
and like look at you're in the darkness but there's stars there and it's almost like looking back like are you following are you are you coming along are you going in this direction <laughs> but like they're dagger road i don't know i don't know where i'm going It feels a little bit like you could be slightly ahead of someone in some sort of a dark period here or some sort of a difficult time. Maybe meeting someone who is going through something similar that and going through something similar that you are going through, but almost as if, I don't know, you're ahead of this person somehow. And that actually really like aligns with these cards really well. So that would also make sense why you were showing up. Just being understanding, just allowing them to go through this process because you are just a couple steps ahead of them. You could. This is also kind of coming up too as someone who could like um, be going to like an AA meeting or somebody, something like that. Like somebody could be going through some sort of addiction process or somebody could be trying to lose weight. Like there's, it, it doesn't have to be a major profound event, but it's something significant enough that it is a personal struggle and you've been there and you're, witnessing this in someone else but it's like you've kind of gotten beyond the personal struggle you've lost the weight and you're maintaining it and it's not like a demon at your door or you've stopped drinking and you've been maintaining that and it's not a demon at your door but right again so this is you're like you're the leader but it's like being the leader by showing the way not necessarily by telling someone what they have to do it's being the example right being the advice for you bring the light guide them to the light Serenity in the beacon. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Outcome if you follow the advice. She who surrenders. Chains, bondage, and release. I don't feel like that's you. Again, I don't feel like it's you. I feel like there's two significant spots in this reading that um, are about outcome is not your outcome. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to get more cards. I have more tarot cards. Well, these aren't tarot. I have tarot cards to add to this. Um, but she who resists, this is justified, resistant, fearless. This person needs to work it through on their own. You can't tell them what to do. You can be there for them. And right, there is a sense of releasing a part of themselves here with whatever this is, surrendering that. Chains, bondage, and release. Something will be released. Something toxic. I mean, anything that is chained and bound feels toxic, feels devilish. The underline is she who thrives, flourish, prosper, and blossom. I gotta be honest, I feel like that's more you. I feel like that's you. And I feel like um, this is something, somebody that you're witnessing for them to reach that point. If you're like Cindy, I don't know, I feel like the one who's battling the demons. Just reverse the energy. That's all, I mean, because it can come in like that. But as a reader, I'm being shown this in this fashion. Sometimes I wonder about that too, right? Because I'll do a reading and I can feel like, I'm like this, re this energy is reversed. Um, but there's got to be a reason that, you know, the universe is conveying the message the way it is to us. I think sometimes too it's to give you a perspective from a different angle. All right, let's see. We really are. You're the new path. You are the renewal. You were the bright light. The chariot, you are through the movement. Yeah. That's so fascinating. Really, damn. And look at it. This is so interesting because I love the way this the black and the white is playing in that card. Okay, yeah. And then and then see the black and the white lion. So you are the strength here. You are the strength along the path, Libra. For somebody. You are the strength along a path for someone here. Literally, this chariot is going down a path. That's so funny. 
All right, the mask you're hiding behind is understanding, witness, and compassion. I don't feel like that you're, um, you're holding back. You are holding back. You're not identifying yourself as some sort of a new beginning or a new path for someone. Shit, the page of swords. What is the, it's the one card in the tarot that is like literally somebody watching or observing something. And what does this person do? But like they're listening, they're watching, observing, they're not saying anything. <laughs> wow, that's fascinating. You're watching an alchemization process. You know, it could be your own child. They could be going through a certain growth stage or developmental stage and you're compassionate. You're like, I remember being a teenager. I remember my first year of university or college or what, you know, whatever. It's just like there's somehow you, you connect with this. You see this, you witness this in someone else and you literally, it is there. How you hide, why? Why you hide your true self? Fearless, justified, resistant too. And this also reminds me a bit like a teenager or a kid, like, you know, their parents can't tell them anything. <laughs> Somebody they just met 20 minutes ago. Wow, mom, do you know that guy that just said to me? That is so smart. I don't know. I just told you that like 20 times, three weeks ago. No, you didn't. There's a resistance towards you or there would be. That's not what you're looking for. You're not looking for the resistance. You're not looking for the... Um, yeah, it's like fearlessness in this person. Like maybe they feel like their back is against the wall a little bit. And what choice does anyone have in that scenario that but to perhaps like just be like, okay, I'm ready to fight. Why you hide your true self? The nine of pentacles. It's interesting. You yourself are protecting something here. You're protecting your own stable sovereignty. A little bit of, you know, not wanting, I don't want to rock my own boat here. So in some ways I want to say, I feel like there's hope. I don't see hope. <laughs> sounded so bad. There's hope. I don't see any hope though. No, I want to say that there got it. There must be because you are showing up like you're, you're witnessing and compassionate towards someone else. You're seeing a struggle that they're going through. And it's as if, well, you, you are actually the new path here. So I want to say, not just yourself, because someone else's energy is coming in here. Like you're observing someone. And, but yet, you know what? You don't want to, I don't really want to, you want to protect your own, perhaps, wealth. You want to protect your own stability. Um, yeah, your own personal sovereignty here. Now, how this affects your relationships? She who instigates. Will this be interesting? Justice is <laughs> you. See, this is the card that I was like, no, this is you. Because it looks like the same woman. And, you know, guys, don't get... Or if you identify as very masculine, too, don't get hung up on a she who. I just feel like it's a very... Um, I don't know. I've never seen a he-who. <laughs> Sounds kind of funny, though. A he-who. They should make a he-who um, deck. But it's like your feminine aspect, right, of you. All these emotional ways that we govern and show ourselves. Where masculine energy tends to kind of hide that and use it in different ways. So you can put he-who. <laughs> that feels good, too. He-who instigates um, justice. That's fascinating. It's almost like allowing the wheels of karma to turn on their own here. And you're prepared to move forward when that happens. But in the meantime, you are like a display of light. You've accomplished something here that someone around you hasn't quite yet. And it's as if the best way to be this leader is to shine, not to play yourself small. That's very, that's a very strong message in here too. Not to allow yourself to be small for this person to feel comfortable. This person needs to like, they need to do the climb and the, 
the fighting for themselves. The advice for you is just to be this light, serenity, a beacon. Ooh, hello. The two of cups. Well, that's interesting. Now, even just saying that, it's almost like a lighthouse. Like the beacon of light. Ah, oh, the beacon of light. Because you're on the path, and this person, like, it feels like their darkness is, is darker. <laughs> their darkness is darker. Because you... You've got, like, you're really, your face is really, well, I guess her face is lit up too. But there's just so much light and there's stars here, you know. It's it's like the clouds have cleared. When it's this dark, it's like it's nighttime and it's cloudy. It's just like no light getting through. But you are the path and you are the chariot. Wow, when somebody comes through a storm, you are the lighthouse. You're the two of cups. That's the advice for you is to be this. To be this light. So interesting as well, because I am getting, I've got it from the early ons of this reading that there's almost like something that someone else is going through. You've already been through that, you know. Because in the Two of Cups is also like a very mutual understanding in another person. Outcome if you follow the advice is chains bondage and release so something is being released here the page of cups gosh fascinating because now it's like this person so there's some sort of loss here i want to say if it's something like a weight loss or if it's something like drinking um there's some other there's a loss here that comes with achieving this so you know either one of those scenarios could also be associated with um you know certain groups or people that are maybe not the best for you you know whenever you hang out with those friends you just sit around and you eat doritos and drink beer <laughs> right so it's just like recognizing i just can't do that anymore because that's going to put me back into this this unhealthy cycle like there's some sort of a period of like a mourning this person this this outcome here is literally like something is finalized for them because they release it but whatever it is it has them like caught up resistant and then it's like you're again it's like showing up like a beacon the way these two Showing up like the beacon. So the warmth, the sunlight after the storm. That's really fascinating, Libra. The Knight of Cups. Now this Knight of Cups is so fascinating because he's not moving. He's just covered and covered in like runes and he's sitting around. Um, I just I like some sort of a stone, spiritual stone formation and holding on to the, the cup is not being offered, right? Which is curious. Because the page is offering the cup. So the there's no movement here. There is no movement. There's no movement. It's just like you are the light. You are shining the light. Oh my God, that is so crazy. So that just brought in like a thought that I had going through my head when I was walking Lily. Because sometimes it's just nothing to look at. <laughs> my head starts working through stuff. Like um, information that's come in. And it's like just playing around with that information in d at different times in my days. And I thought this is fascinating. So, and I thought it would cut, connect with the Two of Cups too. Um, so I just finished watching, I think it's called Our Universe. It was narrated by Morgan Freeman. I find it interesting. It's one perspective. I mean, like, right, because science is, it's, anyway, it's always growing and expanding. And I often find when scientists learn something, that is it. We know it all. You don't know shit yet. You know a portion of a big pie. You don't even know how big that friggin' pie is. So it's still like, it's enough that it causes you to think about things. And one of the things that I thought was fascinating, which I think is fairly true and accurate, is that we are all made up of stardust, right? Like um, suns that have supernova. And one of the things that I was thinking about in the tarot is the sun card, like your self-actualization and happiness and abundance and warmth. And like really finding a path that is truly meant for you and it feels so incredibly right and so incredibly comfortable um and i thought to myself i thought you know we're all made up of this stardust 
what is the possibility that, you know, when you meet someone and you like just jive on a level that you can't explain, you know, compared to other people that you meet and it's like sometimes it's awkward and you're working through it and you just manage it as best as you can. And then there's other people that you meet and there's like just, no, nothing. Like they could be friends that are just, it just downright unexplainably flows. Maybe, just maybe, you have a very equal amount of stardust from a sun that that person does, you know? I don't know, <laughs> you know these are the thoughts that go through my head when I'm walking a dog, watching her take a poop, waiting to <laughs> pick it up. These are the thoughts that go through my head. Sometimes people look at me and they think, Cindy looks pretty just out there, blank. The whole stuff going on in there. So I thought that, I thought, you know, maybe that's a way to explain like energy. It was a fascinating program because they kept talking about things going on in, in space and how that affects us now, like how we were created. So I found it very fascinating. And I thought, geez, that would be an interesting explanation, right? Like on a more like molecular level of how we connect with certain people in certain ways that we don't with others. And it is because you are from a similar stardust. So there, I don't know, maybe there's something like that here. Because, right, like, I don't know where I got that. Why was I, what, I said something, and it set me off on that. So, anyways, that's your reading. Oh, no, should it be? Let's keep going. I don't know. It could be if you want. If you don't want to see any more, you can go to the extended if you want. I'm going to tell you about that at the end. So, I'm going to this. Yeah, I thought that's fascinating. Maybe, right? And how things like, you know, like Larry the Cat, like, from Egypt. I mean, he was born almost two years ago. It'll be April, it'll be two years for him. And to think, how does he just end up here with me in Canada? Like, you know, like I wasn't looking for a cat from Egypt. I didn't even know he was in Egypt when I saw his picture online. This is fascinating. And he just jives. He just fit in like a puzzle piece after a bit of a growing. But that growing pain, ooh, interesting. That growing pain was his trauma coming out. Isn't that interesting? Because I could see how that's connected here too, possibly. Somebody's going through some sort of a trauma experience and their decisions and their outlook is influenced by their trauma. And I could see that in him. I'm like, you're gonna, you're wrecking a good thing because of your past trauma, his reactions. I think I said it in a post, I'll, I'll tell you, he actually became very aggressive towards Lily at about the three week mark. And it actually got to the point where I was I was almost 100% certain it was not going to work, that we weren't going to be able to keep him. Because that was the biggest thing for me. I was like, I can deal with him going on the furniture. I'll work through that. I can, if we have litter box problems, I can do anything. But the one thing that I couldn't was, was Lily because she was there first and she's an important aspect of our family that's already been established. So I wouldn't, I would not want to her life and her happiness to be degraded by me introducing something else. I, I just decided that if it got to that point, it would be better for him to find a place and that would be bright for him, right? And we brought him into our lives thinking that, like, you know, maybe we are just fostering, we don't know. So I was, you know, and it got pretty bad, it did. And I could tell that he, it's almost like he loved everything that he had suddenly, you know, he loved us, he loved the food, he loved, being safe and happy and toys. And then I guess he had to fight for everything, which is interesting. I'm saying this because I'm actually picking this, picking up Larry's energy a bit. Like, but if it's a person. I feel like it's a person. Um, like having to fight for everything and then being transported into a completely different situation. Nobody's taking anything from you. <laughs> you, can be, you can do whatever you want here. You can be relaxed and comfortable, but then seeing Another animal, you know, like once he gets comfortable, like, you know what, I gotta get rid of you. And that's what it seemed like. He did everything he could to stop her from going where she wanted to go. He would jump on her and freak her. It was just, yeah, it wasn't very good. But we worked through it. I spent a lot of time redirecting him to other things when he felt like that, using uh, Feliway, which is a, a pheromone for cats to help calm him when he seemed anxious. Anyways, long story short, Everything is good. We full on adopted him, right? But his trauma was affecting his choices and decisions, even for a cat. And I think, you know, even looking at that, I can think, wow, we could really look at ourselves in that, you know? And he worked through things much quickly, I think, than people would because we have a lot of psychological issues than a cat. 
would likely, especially at such a young age for him. An older cat maybe would have taken a long time too. But that's what I see here. So that's fascinating. I'm getting like so much coming in with your reading, like just channeling it. Um, yeah. So we really are the chariot. You are the new path. You are guide. You're, oh my God, you are. You are, look at this. You have the knight of wands and the ten of cups. You are an, you are an exciting journey to emotional fulfillment. Yeah, a passionate journey towards emotional fulfillment, an exciting adventure towards emotional fulfillment. That's very fascinating reading. So the mask you're hiding behind, you're just understanding, you're witnessing, you're being compassionate. That's all you can do, right? The page of swords, like there's no hands on here. The seven of pentacles in the world it's all it is it's like you're waiting for something to come to an end a conclusion and i felt like that here is the outcome is something is concluded some sort of chains and bondage are released but again it doesn't feel like it's your chains and bondage you're, you're witnessing somebody work through an ending why you now if it's reversed if this energy is reversed you're like cindy i am going through this i honestly feel like somebody's witnessing you somebody's standing back and watching okay and why you hide your true self resistant nine of pentacles the queen of pentacles and the star <laughs> I see how that goes. Yeah, because this card felt like, I don't know how much you can see there. <laughs> so I'm pointing to these, but it's a different table. But this card with the, the dagger feels like someone else. It feels like Larry. <laughs> it's like or at the time was still Abydos. So we're still trying to figure out a name for him. Um, and even a new name for him transformed him. He came running the first time I called that name. I was like, yeah, he wants he wants this new life. Um, but the queen of pentacles, there can be a lot like, so this could be, could be somebody in a partnership. It could be somebody dealing with a parent. It could be somebody who's in some sort of, um, a work scenario. But again, see, now this is the part that felt like you, like you have some sort of personal sovereignty and stability here. So it's important to protect that as well. And with the star, it feels like this, this card. Like showing the light in the darkness, like being the beacon, being the lighthouse. Well, most of these people have a lot of money around them. I don't know what that is. If that's something that's interesting. I want to say, I think it's some, hiding yourself, there's some really practical and reasonable reasons for this with the pentacles, the way the pentacles are showing up. Um, how does this affect your relationships? Now, okay, powerful, provocative leader for justice. The five of cups and the knight of pentacles. Hmm, that's coming on now because this person is down on their knees, right? This person is crying. They've lost something here. And it's also interesting with the justice, like there's something here, some liquid that this person has been drinking and it's poisoned them and they're down. So there's something from this, but there's again, it could be somebody with a drinking issue, but whatever it is, there is some sort of an emotional loss here. But really what this person is mourning is something that was toxic, right? Again, the trauma though. The trauma of a toxic experience, I don't know, could theoretically affect, right? Like this person has to work that out, I guess. Because now with the Knight of Pentacles, it's like dusting yourself off and getting up and going. So again, I feel like too, because you're not being active. It doesn't feel like you're just watching. You're watching this, you're witnessing something. 
And it is because this person has to work through it on their own. You can't tell them how to do this. Again, I guess if you told them how to do this and it didn't work for their scenario, they could blame you. They could be defensive. They could be like, right? Advice for you is to be the beacon in the Two of Cups. This card is really stabbing me. It's the Three of Wands. Wow, it's... That's like, it is, like if you want to look at that person as the lighthouse, they're pulling the boat in, out of the water, out of the storm. This is to be a warm place to land. But you know too, I mean, you're not being told to do this. The timing, like, you know, somebody who really needs your emotional support right now, or that's not what you're being guided to do. It's like once this person has done their work or worked through whatever it is that they're doing, they're, I don't know, what is it? Let's see this, chains, bondage, and releasing this. The Two of Swords, the Seven of Cups, and the Wheel of, wow. Are this, yeah, you know what, you, I don't think you could advise this person. Because <laughs> with the Two of Swords and the Seven of Cups, there is... Everything just seems confusing. Everything seems confusing. You know, going back to Larry again. Or at the time he was Abydos. Because Larry is settled. Larry is cool. Larry and Lily kiss. <laughs> Dude. Well, Lily kisses him and he puts up with it. But so, but yeah, like they're, they're so cute together now. But Abydos, he, he was, I think he was confused. Like it didn't make sense to him that it would be okay to maintain everything that he had and allow another animal to be in that space with him. Because he probably didn't know that. He probably had to fight all the other animals. Yeah, I had to actually, <laughs> I had to delete a comment. Somebody got quite nasty. Um, I found it quite nasty and um, insulting <laughs> to me and Lily. They were calling um, both me and Lily. I don't know, maybe you're watching this video now, but I didn't even bother responding. Um, I think they were offended by the fact, um, you know, that I guess I had to, I had to teach the cat what was right and wrong. And I think the most important reasoning for that though was because he was making his actions. He was doing was doing things based on trauma from the past and situations that no longer existed. So it didn't make any sense to me why you wouldn't try to guide someone or an animal through that. Why you would just allow them to dominate everyone else because now they're powerful and strong and they can survive. Yeah, but we, I think we need more than just surviving in life, right? Like, and that's the thing. But this, see, I'm really picking that up here with the Two of Swords and the Seven of Cups. This person can't make, maybe decision like the only thing that they can really do is follow their their intuition right now and but i want to say with the wheel of fortune there's more needed because they're working through a very confusing cloudy period here and i want to say i don't know if you've been waiting a long time i get that with this card because the petals on that rose are dropping the page of cups Wow, the King of Wands and the Six of Pentacles. This, oh my God, is, he's showing the cat. Like, look at, look at Mr. Cuddles. Mr. Cuddles, this is, the, this is how we can all have equal. We can do everything equally here. We can share equally, give equally. It's leadership. It's a strong, a strong type of self-leadership. And even leadership of others. But I want to say the king of wands is that kind of leadership where oh, you're coming along great. If you're not, that's okay too. Because you don't have to. You don't have to toe the line. It's their own unique way of doing something. So it is. But here, this is the point where you can kind of show up and give a part of yourself. Oh, this is a really interesting reading. Temperance. Wait. There you go. Wait. But I feel like something is alchemizing around you. Not so much that you're alchemizing, right? Because it felt like to me that you're watching alchemization take place. And that's what I got. That's what I, now I'm going to go do the extended. 
Oh, that'd be interesting. So in the extended, I'm going to see how to improve your relationships. I don't Could be other relationships besides this one, because it doesn't seem like you're interacting much with this person with those cards. Um, and what would you, what would your deeper self tell you about the mask that you wear and um, how to release your true potential? Thank you so much, Libra. That felt like a really long reading, but I felt like there was a lot coming out. There was a lot coming out in that reading, Libra. Until next time, my friends, to be gentle with yourselves. Bye.